بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رحمۃ الرسلی اللہ رسول کریم پروفیسر ڈاکٹر نظام الدین چیئرمین پنجاب ایچ ای سی اٹس آلویز اے ڈلائٹ فل مومنٹ ٹو سی یو ایٹ یو ایم ٹی اینڈ وی کنسڈر یو ایز آر پیٹرن اینڈ فرینڈ اینڈ فرینڈ اینڈ پیٹرن آف ہائر ایجوکیشن اوور آل ان دی پروونس آف پنجاب مسٹر حسن علی جیوٹ منسٹر ٹرکی یاسر توگون مسٹر تینگ سونگ مسٹر عابد شیروانی مسٹر عبد المامن السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنرل مین وی ہیو کم ٹو دی کنکلوژن آف دی کانفرنس ایگزیبیشن ول کنٹینیو ٹمورو ایز اے پارٹنگ تھاٹ آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو شیئر تھری تھنگس ویری بریفلی Uh, number one is, uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, somewhere uh, yesterday, that uh, there is a great need to focus upon the challenge of increasing exports from Pakistan. If we look at the exports of our, of our neighboring countries, then you find Bangladesh having population of 163 million, which is 25% less than Pakistan, but boosting exports worth about uh, $38 billion, which is almost double than Pakistan. So that is Bangladesh, 25% less population and uh, twice the exports. Now, if we go to Sri Lanka, and we have Jamil here with us from Sri Lankan uh, Trade Corporation, So population of Sri Lanka is 20 million, which is one by 10th of Pakistan. And their exports are 10 billion, which is half of Pakistan. So with a population which is one by 10th, they are ex- able to export half of uh, what Pakistan exports. And uh, if you uh, similarly see the Turkey, uh, the population of Turkey is 80 million and their exports are crossing 160 billion. So their exports, uh, their population is about one third of Pakistan and their exports is nearly 10 times Pakistan. If we were to calculate the potential of Pakistani exports in terms of the population size and extrapolate, then Pakistan's population, pa- Pakistan with the population of 200 million and with the strategic location that we occupy, And with all the resources that we have, and with all the talent that we have, with all the diaspora that we have all around the world, so I believe that our exports should be anywhere, if we apply the Turkish formula, 400 billion, then it should be $400 billion. And if we apply the formula of uh, Sri Lanka, then at least it should be five times, which is at least $100 billion. So see the potential, see what we are missing. see where is the gap and see how easily we can solve our problems of poverty we can alleviate poverty we can provide food uh, uh, medicines uh, shelter and jobs to everyone Uh, we can take care of all needy and underprivileged we can give free education and free Uh, cure and health services to every individual in Pakistan and see our, where our per capita income would go if we are able to uh, realize our potential for exports in years to come and at a faster pace. Uh, when I, as I mentioned before, when I went to Turkey first time in 1995, their exports were $35 billion. In a matter of like 20 years, their exports has have risen to about uh, uh, 160 billion dollars. So they have worked, they have done something. They've aligned everything accordingly. They've aligned macro policies of government and made government a patron and uh, responsible for providing a conducive framework for businesses to operate. Their ministers are all the, available all the time and they are geared to do their best So their job is to offer a platform which is helpful, which is friendly to business, to people. And they are also taking care of development of uh, technical expertise, 
research and development, innovation, uh, education, peace and order in society, uh, helping all the institutions to work uh, in one on one, uh, sharing one common ideal and one common goal. It is not easy. It cannot come easily, but it is not difficult. There is there are, there is a standard. There there are standard policy frameworks available. Everything is available. Everything is written. We can just cut and paste within our society, and be uh, be uh, be uh, together in this common ideal that we have to work together to increase the exports of Pakistan. Now, my second point is that you see what we are missing and you see how grave are the challenges. If we are continue, if we will see in future a continuous slight in our exports, it, is already, it, is, it has already come down from 24 to about 20 or less. And there are predictions that if nothing will be done, this trend will decline to 17, 18, 19. And how shameful it would be. How shameful that Sri Lanka can have five times the population size exports. Turkey would be heading towards $200 billion, a trillion dollar economy. And we are sitting at the tail end of China having trillions of dollars of economy and this occupying a strategic location, having ports, having all the resources of the world and the capital, the best and the best. And we are going down and down and down. So I think my second message is that if I were to hope, pin my hope upon the existing big business houses, I don't want to name any that these will be the people who will go back to their drawing board and do something and in three years we will see our exports going up. So I'm not hopeful. I don't see the top 10 or top 20 would be able to do that. What they have done is before us. We can see that. What they have achieved and what they are helping, we can see the type of commitment they have. We can see the level of expertise they have, we can see their momentum, we can see the effect of their strategies, we can see where their mind is. So I don't see them, the top 10 or top, top 20 business houses. And, I, and let's have no hope. It is their responsibility, yes. They should be doing it, but I, we should not wait for the next five years or 10 years. They will do it, and we will say no. So my second point is, it is, I think, the responsibility of young students and graduates who are studying right now within academia, who haven't yet taken a job, who are studying, that please develop yourself a plan for that how can you uh, position yourself in the global market. So global markets are open. Global markets are there for you. And by virtue of your access to the global markets through internet, your computer, the wealth of information that is available at, at your fingertips, I think you can do it. And I'm sure you can do it. I've seen uh, students within my academia that one student came to me while he, he was in textiles, and he developed a project for exports of towels when he was in the final year. And after three, four years, he came to me for some reference letter, and he said that he applied that project and he was already exporting worth about $1 million, a very poor student, and he, who had nothing, and who, was, had a, uh, who, was, who had a desk in a friend's office loaned to him. So he could do that and leverage the industry in Faisalabad and the customers out there and manage $1 million. And now he had sufficient funds. And when he came to me, he was thinking of moving and having office in Dubai. So he would be an exporter from Dubai, not from Pakistan. All right. So the second thing is that our students, it is the job of our students. It is the job of our faculty to train them to become a global businessman, to become a global player, develop the mindset, develop their skills, their communication, and the confidence, and give them the tools for their analysis and decisions so that they can develop their business houses. So the future 20 business groups, 10 years, 20 years down the road. 
So if Pakistani exports have to increase from $20 billion to $40 billion, and they must, and they should, and inshallah they will. So if they have to increase from $20 to $40 billion, that $20 billion should come from you, the young mind sitting here. And that is that can come about if the faculty teaching them, training them, living with them, talking to them, working with them, will also raise this issue in class, raise this issue in when they will select their projects, monitor them and evaluate them that they are, our graduates are exporter, pro-exporters. Our graduates should be exporter friendly and our graduates should be taken up by the companies who want to export or they should have their own companies exporting. So I think at the moment, the, the ecosystem that we are uh, living in, uh, capital is available and accessible. Uh, human resources are also available. The existing infrastructure can be leveraged. So I think you alone and, and lonely yet can, I think, achieve phenomenal targets in the global markets. There are those who are here, they have their own stories. The businessmen who have joined us here, they have their own stories. And uh, you can be future millionaires, you can be future billionaires, that that 20% that otherwise, if we will remain hooked that no, the existing will come, they will do something. No, they are on to something different maybe. They have a different agenda now. They are not anymore willing, working, motivated to do something for increasing the sport. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been falling, right? They are still rich, they are becoming richer, but maybe they are doing something else. So here is this market. And I hope that our students will do that. Third, now, this kind of uh, activity and this kind of event, the purpose is to sensitize our students with these possibilities. Is to throw them to the business world and have the business world also come to them so that we create this forced, intimate interaction and relationship so that our students can get to know that, okay, why well, this is how it can be done, this is what it is, what this is possible, and this is what I can do. They can have ideas, they can be inspired, they can be motivated, and they can see, yes, develop a confidence and a sense of self-assurance that we can do it and we will do it. So this is what I think should be the, the gain of this conference. I'm really grateful to all the speakers who have come. We have talked about uh, B2B, B2C. This is U to B and B to U, which means university, all those in the university, faculty, students, everyone. So I think this is a new kind of relationship that we are going to establish in the, in the history of uh, business, that here is, this is the first kind, I think, in the world that a university has come about. And only the only reason that we have done is, I think this facility of Expo Center is here next to us. So we thought that we should leverage it. When it was being built, the idea was in my mind that we will leverage it and we will use it. We will use it as our extension. So we want to hold more kind, more fairs and exhibition. We want to engage more students and faculty also in it. And I think this will give a completely new dimension and direction to what universities do, to higher education, and to actually satisfy the expectations of stakeholders. Our stakeholders want our graduates to have good jobs. Our stakeholders want our graduates to be earning, to be capable, to be making, to be going around the world and doing well, and to be making wealth, generating wealth for the country, for the world, for our people, and for themselves. So I think we will be able to meet those expectations if we engage more within the classroom and, and with, within the realm of textbooks with this mind that our graduates should be pro-exports. It's not just pro-entrepreneurship, it's pro-exports. And then we help them, we hold their hands, we guide them, we monitor them, we coach them so that they take the first steps and really become an exporter in their lives. So that is the goal and objective, and I thank you all once again for your cooperation. <laughs>